What is going on, YouTube? I am Lamont at Large, and today I am at the McLeod Cemetery here in McLeod, Oklahoma. I'm here to visit the grave of one Denver St. Clair, a man who was killed via the old high school bully tactic of getting a wedgie. Now, let's go to December 21st of 2013. It's the holidays. It's the time of the year where families come together, uh, have good times, drink a little bit, eat even more, gain five pounds, so forth and so on. So on that night in the trailer of Denver St. Clair, 58 years of age, was his stepson, 34-year-old Brad Davis. Now, that night, they had gotten into an argument because earlier that summer, Denver's wife, Tressia, had called the police to report that Denver St. Clair had committed a little bit of insurance fraud. Apparently, he burnt down his own repair business here to collect the proceeds from the payout from the insurance company. And as the two were drinking... Denver starts getting more and more belligerent, more and more with the crazy talk. Now, let me say really quickly, Denver was known for being a rather angry drunk. It was of no surprise if they would hear this guy having a fist fight with somebody when he started drinking. So on that night, Denver tells Brad, I'm going to tell the police that you set the fire to my business. You're the one that did it, not me trying to talk his way out of it, right? So a fist fight ensues and Brad knocks out his stepdad, knocks him out cold, he's unconscious on the floor. And to add insult to injury, Brad thought it'd be a good idea to give him a good old fashioned wedgie. A wedgie, well, pretty much what a wedgie is, is on your screen. You see it in TV, you see it in movies. Uh, a high school bully sees a nerd, an unsuspecting nerd, and takes his underwear and pulls it right up over his head. Now, usually, these are funny and hilarious situations. However, in this situation, it was not funny and it was not hilarious because that wedgie was the result of uh, Denver's death. Uh, the next day, he was on the floor. And he was already dead. Uh, ambulance was called. They came, but he was already dead. He was taken to the coroner's office for an autopsy. And the uh, medical examiner determined that Denver St. Clair died mainly of asphyxiation. But he also put in the report blunt force trauma to the head. Police interviewed Brad about the fight. He said that his stepdad was threatening him. This was a, a constant thing. He was simply defending himself. He hit him in the face, gave him a two-piece. He fell out, knocked out, and he said that he wanted to embarrass and humiliate Denver and make him think about what he did and how he was acting. So he thought it'd be... A funny idea to give him a wedgie, pull his underwear up over his head, and then take a picture with his cell phone. Unfortunately for Denver and of Brad, he did not know that the cloth from the elastic band had ripped and basically the elastic strangled him to death as, as he was knocked out cold and drunk. He was arrested and charged with first-degree murder about 10 days after he had died or so. And, of course, you have a trial. And it was the biggest talk of the town, not only here, but also in all over online, all over the world. There, you guys remember this story. And so they go through the trial, and Tressia, Brad's uh, mother, and married to uh, Denver St. Clair, as a character witness she did tell the prosecutor she said listen uh denver was a very violent drunk uh back in 2001 
One day, he put a shotgun to my head and said he would kill me. And this guy did burn down his shop to try to collect the proceeds from the insurance. And my son, Brad, he's a nice guy. He's a former Marine. He served his country. He would do anything that he could to help anybody. However, if you don't know how it is in Oklahoma, it is a very, very tough out here. Uh, Oklahoma, in my opinion, is the last state that you want to come here to commit any kind of crime. They will lock you up and literally throw away the key. They, this is a, a prison state, in my opinion, and it, it just is what it is. So a 34-year-old Brad Davis facing a life sentence uh, went ahead and in the summer of 2014, he took a deal where he pled to first-degree manslaughter and he received 30 years in prison. And in Oklahoma, when you commit a violent crime and you get sentenced to prison, you got to do 85% of your time. So that's about 25 and a half years. He will be eligible for parole. He'll probably be released by then. Uh, around the uh, first three months of 2041. And by that time, I believe he will be right at around the age of 60 or 61. Now, I have looked in this cemetery for about 45 minutes. As you can see, it is not very big and it is very sparse. Not many graves. Now, Mr. St. Clair is buried out here. However, he has an unmarked grave. I have laid upon with my own very eyes every single grave out here. And it appears that his family just did not get him a grave. That kind of tells you somewhat who this man was. That kind of tells you his character. Now, let me say this. Oftentimes, people, if I'm looking for a grave and there's no marker, it's simply because either the family couldn't afford it or sometimes a family feels that it's too final. It's too final. They just can't do it. They just can't, you know, order the grave and do all this and that. Um, there is two markers here that don't have a name on it. There's that white cross with the flowers right there. It could be. I have no idea. And then if you go over here, there is a bench that has nobody's name on it. Other than that, every marker out here is very, very old with no name on it because time has eroded it. Or there's just simply no marker to the grave. So I do not know where exactly in this very cemetery he is buried. Um, if you look across right there, there is a prison. And I was thinking possibly Brad Davis might be in that very prison. Uh, but he's not. He's actually at, at a prison about uh, two and a half hours, I believe, uh, north or so of here. Uh, and that is where he is serving his time. As I said earlier, Oklahoma is a rather tough state when it comes to people committing crimes. I want to interject my personal opinion about this matter. As I've explained to you in this video, uh, Denver St. Clair, by all intents and purposes, was a very violent, drunk uh, individual. And my personal opinion is that I believe the sentence of Brad Davis, where he has to do at least 25 and a half years of his life in prison and he does not get out until 2041. I think that's rather excessive. Um, I think the only reason why he got so many years in prison, of course, other than the fact that he died was after he knocked him out, he could have just well enough let it alone, let him wake up on the floor the next day and it would have been another day here at McLeod. But because of him doing the wedgie and thus strangling him, that is where he is at today. I feel that, honestly, this man did not mean to kill Denver at all whatsoever. Uh, I think during a murder case, murder trial, what have you, I think intent oftentimes should dictate the sentence of somebody, uh, the guilty party involved in said crime. Uh, I believe that his sentence will eventually get reduced over time. I don't think he'll have to sit in prison until 2041. I, I believe they will 
lower his sentence and eventually he'll get out a little bit earlier than that. Anyways, uh, wherever Denver St. Clair is, rest in peace. He did not deserve to get killed all because you are a violent drunk does not mean it's an executable offense. And Brad Davis, of course, made a mistake. Live, but not live, but still alive. By the grace of God, I am Lamont at large in McLeod, Oklahoma. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Let's you know when I upload a video. God bless. I'll see you, of course, on the next vlog. Peace out.